Here are solutions to homework set number 9 for EC463 Modern Control. This homework looks at calculus of variations and the Riccati equation. The first problem is calculate the shape of a soap film. Now what soap films do is they minimize the surface area. So if we have one disc right here at 0, the radius is 6. Over at 4, I've got a radius of 9. What's the shape of the soap film? Well, to do that, I want to find out the shape that minimizes the surface area. From the lecture notes, the functional is going to be uh, y prime times the square root 1 plus y prime squared, or just y. So y is the circumference, 2 pi r, I'm using a 2 pi, but that doesn't change the minimum. This is the length. So take the circumference times the length, that's the surface area of the soap film, integrate between 0 and 4, that's the total surface area. The solution, again, from the lecture notes, is going to be hyperbolic cosine. That gives you a problem. Find two equations, or I've got two unknowns to find. To do that, I need two equations for two unknowns. To find the two points, the two unknowns, plug in the endpoints. At the left endpoint, when, y, when x equals 0, y is 6. When x equals 4, y is 9. So there's my two equations, two unknowns. Solve. Well, these are actually pretty hard to solve, but fortunately, we got MATLAB. What I do in MATLAB is set up my functional, set up a function. I'm going to pass a and b. That's the matrix z. Parsing it, the first entry is my guess on a, guess on b. Calculate the error in the first equation. So bring the 6 to the right, call that e1. Bring the 9 to the right, call that E2. Find A and B to make E1 and E2 0. Or squaring them, find A and B to minimize J. That's the function f min search. f min search will find the minimum of a function. So once I set this up in MATLAB, bring up MATLAB. I can sit there and guess, guess again. So this is called soap. I'm going to say, what is soap of 1, 2? Uh, it's not 0. That's by j, the sum squared error. So 1, 2 is wrong. Let's try 1.1, 1. 1, 2. OK, that got worse. Let's try 0. 0.9, 2. Better, keep iterating until I get to 0. Or let fmin search search for you. So that'll be your z comma e is fmin search minimize this function that's my initial guess let her run and poof there's your answer fmin search is actually really impressive so that's one answer that's a and b that's one solution a problem with nonlinear optimizations and things like this there could be multiple solutions I've got nonlinear equations to solve, could be a lot of them. If I give it a different initial guess, like uh, 50, I get a second solution. Let's try 150, uh, still the second solution. Turns out there's actually two solutions. Here's one, here's the second. I'm not quite sure why we have two solutions, but you do. If I plot the two, Here's the first solution, there's the second solution. So here's the first one, there's the second one. That's what you get. So one of those two is actually the minimum. I'm not exactly sure which one it is, um, but there are two solutions to this equation. I suspect one's a maximum, one's a local minimum, but that's the extremes. Anyway, it's problem one. Problem two, let's take a soap film, it's starting on a disc, that has a radius of 6. And if I have a glass, piece of wetted glass, what's the shape of the soap film that attaches to the glass? So if I start initially, it'll be 6, move the glass away. What's the shape when the glass is at 2? Well, again, the solution will be in this form. At the fixed endpoint, plug in the point, and I get my first equation. The second equation, since it's free, is fy prime must be 0, which works out to y prime is 0, 
which works out to the derivative of cosh is cinch, cinch at the right endpoint is zero. So there's my two equations. Here's the second one. Here's the first equation. Solve. Same approach as before. Throw that in fmin search. Here's my guess of a and b. There's the first equation. There's the second equation. Find a and b so that both are zero. If I start with this, my initial guess, here's the solution. Give it a second initial guess, there's my solution. There's actually two solutions to this problem. The error is zero, so they're both valid. If I plot them, here's the two shapes. This is the first solution, there's the second solution. And notice that the interface is perpendicular. It's problem two. Problem three. With calculus of variation, I can calculate the shape of a hanging chain. If I start right here at seven, at 10, I go to eight, let the chain hang. The length of the chain is going to be 11. What length of meters, the chain is 11 meters long, what shape will minimize the potential energy? And that's what chains do. They minimize potential energy. If I do that, I'll have to add a Lagrange multiplier. So here is the length of the chain, the potential energy actually. This is the length. Length has to be 11. Uh, throw in a Lagrange multiplier, you get that term. Put it all together, the solution, again from the record, lecture notes, will be in this form. Now I've got three unknowns. The left endpoint gives you one unknown, the right endpoint gives you a second unknown, and the length of the chain, integrate this, and I get that. The total length has to be 11 meters. <clears throat> so, creating a function in MATLAB to solve, again, these are nasty nonlinear equations, hard to solve by hand, MATLAB comes to the rescue. I'm going to guess A, B, and M. <coughs> At the left endpoint, this equation has to be satisfied. When x equals 0, y is 7. At the right endpoint, when x is 10, y is 8. And the length is 11. So evaluate this between the two endpoints. Uh, minus 11 equals 0. Call that e1, e2, e3. Find a, b, and m to minimize these. Make them all 0. So return the sum squared error. Same trick as before. Now use fbin search to find a, b, and m and you get your solution. Error is zero. Basically, that means these are correct. So if I plot it, here's a, b, and m. Here's the equation for it. That's the shape of a chain that's 11 meters long, hanging between two points, one meter apart in height, 10 meters apart in distance. Okay, so that's some of the uses of calculus of variation. You can calculate the shape of soap films, calculate the shape of hanging chains, and that's really about it. The math just gets too hard for other shapes. But what you can do is you can actually use it for optimal control. Problem four looks at a problem. This is kind of like I'm a civil engineer. I want to go from a town that's at 0, 05, that's town A. I want to go to town B that's at 10, 6. Find the road that minimizes the cost. And the cost is going to be 4x squared. So as I move away, the cost goes up. So I want to go down to the origin quickly. But it's also a function of x dot squared. So I want to keep the slope down, uh, but also keep x small. Which path minimizes the total cost? Well, to do that, my functional, this guy right here is my functional f. Any solution has to satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation. So plugging it in, I get 8x minus ddt uh, 4x dot take the derivative, any solution has to satisfy that differential equation. So doing the algebra correctly, there was a mistake previously, I get 8x minus 4x double prime, uh, let s be derivative, that's factor at the uh, 4, 2 minus s squared times x equals 0, either x equals 0, which is the trivial solution, or s is plus or minus square root of 2. Uh, going with the latter case, that tells me that x is in this form, something e to the square root of 2t plus something e to the minus square root of 2t. 
two unknowns, so we need two equations for two unknowns. To solve, plug in the two endpoints. At the left endpoint, when t is 0, x is 5. When t is 10, x is 6. Give me two equations, two unknowns. Solve. In MATLAB, I'm solving that using matrices. Um, and I get A is 0 0.000004, B is 4.99995. There's my answer. And if you want to plot it, um, using MATLAB, so I get more decimal places, I start out at 5, come down, then go back to 6. That's the optimal path given that cost function. And kind of note, if you do this, what you're going to wind up with is these two roots, one stable, one unstable. The stable one is kind of how you want to behave for most of the time. The unstable one's needed so that right at the end, the unstable pole kicks in and takes you to your destination. The last problem, this is actually where we're starting to get into optimal control. I've got a first order dynamic system, x dot is minus 0.1x plus u. I want to minimize this cost function. Minimized 4x squared plus 2u squared. Subject that at t equals 0, I'm at 5. So this is at 0, 5. At the end, I want to be at 10, 6. Point B is at 10, 6. At 10 seconds, I'm at 6. Uh, what path minimizes this cost functional for that dynamic system? Well, to do that, I use the Euler-Lagrange equation. Any solution has to satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation. But my function, um, our functional will be this guy, 4x squared plus 2u squared, plus bring the x dot to the right. I actually brought everything left. And set it equal to 0. That's equal to 0. I can always set or subtract 0 and not change anything times Lagrange multiplier. That's actually my cost function, my functional that I'm trying to minimize. To do that, I've got x, u, and m. That means they have three sets of Euler-Lagrange equations. The first one, the Euler-Lagrange equation with respect to x has to be satisfied. Partial with respect to x gives you 8x, and here's an x, 0.1m, minus the full derivative with respect to t of the partial of f with respect to x dot. That gives you this term. Differentiating, I get one equation for three unknowns. The Euler-Lagrange equation with respect to u has to be satisfied. That gives you 4u minus m. Second equation. The Euler-Lagrange equation with respect to m has to be satisfied. There's no m dot, so I just get this term, which are the dynamics of the system. Again, not too surprisingly, the solution has to satisfy the system's dynamics. Kind of a given. Three equations, three unknowns, solve. Uh, one way to do that is take this equation, solve for m, substitute up here, um, gives you, you know, plugging that in for m, up here, and then once I get u, plug it into Where I'm at. Just plug, plugging it in, I get u's. Solve for u, plug it into here. So that's your 0.1 or 0.4 times u uh, minus 4 times u dot. So taking the derivative, I get my second order differential equation. Whatever the path is has to satisfy that equation. Uh, conveniently, the x dots drop out, gives you this form. Let s be derivative. That has to be satisfied. Solving for s, s is plus or minus 1.4177. Okay, that tells me that x of t is in this form. Plug in the two endpoints at the left endpoint, right endpoint, two equations, two unknowns, solve, and I get x of t. Find a and b, here's a, there's b. So that's your optimal path. Once I know x of t, I can find u of t. U of t is just x dot plus 0.1x. That's the dynamics. And under the optimal input. Plotting it, just for fun, is um, 
So anyway, here's solving for my two unknowns, give me more decimal points so I can solve. Here's A and there's B. Once I know A and B, here's my path. And that's the optimal path going from point A, 0, 5, to point B, 10, 6, given your dynamics, given my cost function. So all that was homework set number nine.